boy, oh boy, do I have a tail to tell. Do I have a yarn to spin? Uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Couldn't tell you. Also, I forgot, it's super echoey in here. Sorry, I've been out of town. So let me find my love, and then I'll start to tell you this wild and wondrous tale. Also, have you guys met the piano yet? Not yet. I'm trying to learn Vienna. Hannah Gell printed out the music for me. First step, gotta learn how to read sheet music. I hope you guys are inserting your own angelic choir. Give me a sec. Okay, let's do this now. Hey guys, it has really been a while since we've done this. Uh, we, meaning I, have just sat alone in a room talking to you. Hey, Macarena. Still got it. So as you may have noticed, over the summer, I have been in the physical proximity of the one and only Taylor Swift. Uh, not one, not two, but three times. And I haven't talked about any of it. Why? Because I'm a very busy person with a rich and fulfilling life. However, Ella's out of town in Italy. Wapa! And uh, I got nothing else to do, so let's vlog. Ooh, so 2014. Now, a little bit of backstory. I was, now some backstory. I was a little bit late to the Taylor Swift party. Um, I didn't really get on board until Grace Helbig took me to the 1989 concert. I mean, it was pretty nuts. And after that, I was pretty much sold, you know? I loved it, I loved it. And then after Lover came out, I was like, oh my God, I love it even more. This is like Joni Mitchell level good, guys. I know, listen, I know, okay? I know what I just said, and I mean it. So let's move on. Anyway, it all begins with the You Need to Calm Down music video, right? So it's like, I'm there, I'm on set, it's amazing, Taylor's great, everything's great. After filming the music video, I assumed I would never hear from or speak to Taylor Swift ever again, right? Wrong! I was later invited to the VMA nomination music video rap party. I don't know how you refer, what do you, you get it, you know? It was drinks and fun and nice, happy joy. After that, Taylor Swift was like, do you wanna go to the VMAs? And I was like, no, I'm sure there are other people that you should invite. That's literally what I said, guys. And guess what, that's not the only dumb thing that's come out of my mouth around this person. And here's where stuff starts to get a little funny, friends, because the day at the VMAs was also the day that we had reserved our two back-to-back -back appointments at Kleinfeld's in New York. So, A, we were gonna be in New York, that was convenient, but B, we had all of our family and friends with us, and Monday was shaping up to be a very long and exhausting day. But hey, when the Joni Mitchell of our generation, oh my God, I said it again, invites you to go to the VMAs, you gotta go, right? So I decided that after spending a very long and emotionally both enriching and exhausting day of trying on bridal wear, it was time to quickly change into a different outfit and head to the VMAs. So let's talk about going to a party alone. So then I do the red carpet, flash, 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 and I get to my seat and begin to await the award show. Ta-da, look how happy I am, you know? I love nothing more than to observe unobserved, you know, just kind of like sit back and like just watch it all come together because like, you know, I'm, it, I, when I'm in front of it all, I feel pretty awkward. Then I get this text that says, if Taylor wins, she'd love everyone to come down on stage with her. To which I'm like, ha ha ha, I'll do my best and in my head, having no intention of physically moving from the safety of my seat. Then a commercial break comes and my seat is moved to now be directly behind Taylor Swift on the uh, downstairs front stage of the awards. Uh, and then Taylor wins an award. And then we win the award for good. Am I telling this story too fast? I feel like I'm telling this story too fast, but honestly guys, this is what it was like to experience it in real time. It was pretty nuts and a total blur. By the way, I sat next to Trish Cyrus. Oh God, I'm so, I'm so embarrassing. You have no idea. So when a woman sits down next to me and I turn and I'm like, hi, I'm Hannah, because like literally there's nothing else to do besides talk to other people. And they're like, oh, hi, I'm Trish Cyrus. That's my husband up there, Billy Ray. And I'm just like, oh, I interviewed Miley Cyrus once, actually, I forgot about that. God, it's been a long time. Wow. Anyway, long story short, you guys know me. I'm not that great with knowing who people are. Not in like an arrogant, like pretentious kind of way, super not in a pretentious way. More like in a deer in headlights, like overstimulated kind of way. So then, so the first time we go on the stage for the award for good, uh, Todrick speaks and I can hear him and it's beautiful and great and I am hiding behind him and that feels really nice too. There is one amazing picture though. Let's look at it together, shall we? What? 
a crazy night. Wow. So after that, I then retreat to the safety of my seat up in the stands and I'm like, ah, good job, Hannah. You did it. You went. You sat. You're good. You're good. After that, there's a second nomination, which is for video of the year. So same rule applies. If Taylor wins, she wants everyone to go on stage. I'm like, but I'm already up here back at the seats. But who's sitting next to me in my entire row? All the drag queens from the music video. And they were like, I'm gonna get down on that stage if she wins, everybody. And I was like, and I'm gonna step out of the way and let everybody get there first and hope that we run out of time before I get to the stage. Because frankly, I just, it was just a lot of lights and sounds. <laughs> So then boom, Taylor Swift wins again. You need to calm down, wins a second award, which means everyone starts rushing down to the stage again. Oh my God, how exciting. So then we get down there and I'm thinking like, hey, here's another time for me to just kind of clap and be a proud Hannah. And then Taylor very kindly takes my hand and pulls me onto the stage. It was very nice. Literally, I haven't watched any of it just because of my own self-consciousness. I mean, I did see one picture, which is this one, and like, what am I doing? Who am I? Why is it so big? And that's not where the craziness ends. And then we all rush off the stage, and now we're suddenly backstage in Taylor Swift's dressing room. And I'm like, what's happening? Sorry, I wish I could be more descriptive and I spent some time reflecting on it and you know kind of thinking about the journey of the night But you have to remember again. I spent the whole day at Kleinfeld's. I was so tired at this point I was like jet lagged and emotionally exhausted and physically exhausted And then we get backstage to Taylor Swift's dressing room and then Taylor Swift is like show me pictures of your cats And then I pull out my phone and I'm like, huh? Here What is happening? I also met Taylor Swift's mom, who was very, very lovely and charming, and everybody in general was very lovely and charming. The whole team was lovely and charming. It was amazing. So at this point, it's like 10.30. So at this point, it's like 10.30, and I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to get back to Manhattan from Newark? Hmm. So I decide, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna leave Prudential Center and go grab a cab and call a Lyft. So I go downstairs, I see the VIP security people, and I'm like, where's the best place to get a taxi? And they're like, the Courtyard Marriott down the street. So if you've ever been um, wandering around Newark at 11 p.m., it's not the most inviting area at night. So I went to uh, the Courtyard Marriott, and there was a police officer standing outside those thick glass doors, and I was like, hey, is there a bellman or a front desk guy I could talk to to call a cab? And he was like, nope, you should probably try City Hall. There's no cabs that are gonna be coming around here. I was like, okay, fine, where's City Hall? He's like, oh, it's like four or five blocks that way. And then just points in a direction of the darkness. And at this point, I realize I've made a terrible mistake and need to double back and try and circle back up with my newfound drag queen friends. And if you're wondering why I didn't just call Lyft or Uber, it's because the entirety of Prudential Center was also calling Lyfts and Ubers and leaving. So I go back to the center, I do a little fast walk, put my hand with my phone, like I look like a rep, I'm like an agent and I'm talking to somebody on the phone, I'm like blah, 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 blah. Then I get stopped and they won't let me back in. Anyway, it was a long night. Long story short, I made it back to the island of Manhattan at midnight. So what does that mean? That means it's time to go to the after party, everybody. Go back to the hotel room. I say hi to Ella. I give her a hug. I say, if I sit down, I will probably not stand back up. So I just need to keep on trucking. I throw on a pair of jeans and a t-shirt and I head to the after party. Okay. Guys, I have so many questions for myself. Whew. Okay, so I go to the after party and I get let in, I go upstairs, and lo and behold, it's a party. So I get to the after party, go up to the section, go up to Taylor's section, um, go say hi to Taylor, I'm like, hey, congratulations on everything. Taylor Swift is like, hey, do you wanna sit here? And I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, I was so hungry at that point and so tired, I really couldn't think about anything else besides like, getting something to eat and getting a drink, you know? So when Taylor Swift very kindly asked if I wanted to sit with her and her friends, uh, I said no, uh, and that's what happened right then. So I have a little slider, which was delicious. I have a little margarita, which was delicious. And then I start to feel some semblance of normalcy until my second margarita when I just was operating on pure adrenaline exhaustion brain. 
And now what that really means in my mind is that I don't know what words are or how to talk them at all. You know? Night goes on, we dance, we sing, we celebrate. It was just such a great time. And everyone I met that night was just so nice and friendly and it was just such a good, positive environment. Particularly Uzo Aduba who was there um, and we danced a lot and I think we became best friends. Uh, what else happened that night? Oh, I remember I told Bella Hadid that I thought her outfit looked like an Italian husband getting ready for work. A beautiful Italian husband getting ready for work. You know, like the tank top, like, oh, where's my shirt? I gotta go. And then I remember talking to Taylor's team and then I remember them being like, go play with the other people. And I was like, ah. I got to meet a lot of incredible, amazing people, you know? And then I, and then I, God, now, uh, God, why, uh, look, you know when you really respect and admire someone, and the second to last thing I remember is, um, sitting again next to Taylor and being like, hey man, I think we could be buds, you know, you really remind me of my friend Grace, to which she said, hell big, to which I said, how do you know who that is? And then that's kind of the last thing that I remember from that night. But I like to think that if I had the opportunity to sit down and say a couple things to Taylor Swift, you know that phrase that's like, don't meet your heroes? It basically means that, you know, don't meet your heroes because they're gonna let you down. Um, I don't think that's necessarily the case. If your heroes are your heroes for the right reason. Now, I'm a fan of Taylor Swift, not only because I'm a big music buff, but also because I'm a big business and branding buff. And frankly, guys, I think this is her seventh album and it's so good and it's only getting better and it's selling phenomenally well and the entire marketing campaign and everything behind it is so good. And as someone who is trying to work in the entertainment industry and as someone who's trying to figure out like the evolution of a brand, I just have such profound respect for someone that can take a step towards activism and be maintaining the same bar of professional, accessible musicality that she has. I know, that sounds, I don't know how that sounds, whatever. Long story short is, I just am really happy that she's crushing it. And it makes me wanna crush it too. And while I have your attention, you know, I just wanna say like, <clears throat> So, being in the You Need to Calm Down music video meant a lot to me, um, and that video winning video of the year had me floored. Um, you know, I know we spend a lot of time talking about queer spaces and mainstream media and all that good stuff, um, but like that's as mainstream as it gets, and that feels really, really good. You know, that feels really good. And for me, there's a lot of times where you as a queer person don't get to see yourself reflected in entertainment in these ways, you know, like in video, music video of the year, you know? And another way is frankly during the holidays, which is why I wrote my new cookbook, My Drug Kitchen Holidays, How to Savor and Celebrate the Year. The alt title of that book really is How to Be Queer at Christmas. Um, it talks a lot about how so many of our traditions and so many of our festivities and our ideas of like, oh, this is a holiday well spent are portrayed through a very binary heteronormative lens, you know? Um, and so with this new book, I just kind of wanted to open up the holidays for everybody. Not just people who come from a stable family background or a dysfunctional family background or a queer family background. I just want everybody to feel welcome and everyone to realize that there's always a reason to savor a moment and always a reason to celebrate it afterward. So, you know, this is me being a business and being a brand and saying, hey, if you want me to be able to write books ever again, you really need to pre-order a copy of My Drug Kitchen Holidays today at this link right here, because if it doesn't make a bestseller list, I'm probably not gonna get to publish another. So go ahead and download and buy and get the audio book today. Do all those great things um, because I'm in it to win it, guys. I love being a part of entertainment and I love being a part of the media and I want to be successful. And what all these experiences have brought together for me is that I feel really motivated right now, you know? I've been really struggling as like a legacy YouTuber trying to figure out where I exist in the entertainment space now. After having two best-selling books and a TV show, I'm like, where do I go from here? And honestly, I'll know when I get there. So, yeah.
Okay, cool. I feel good. That's it. That's all I have to say right now. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. If you're already subscribed, guess what? Click unsubscribe and subscribe again. Apparently it's a hack to trick the algorithm. Nah, I'm serious. Click subscribe, click unsubscribe, click subscribe. Unsubscribe, subscribe, who knows? Pre-order your copies of my new book today and thank you so much to Taylor Swift and everyone on our team for involving me in this beautiful dawn of a new era. Um, that's it, I love you guys. Have a great day, bye-bye.